Okay, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how we can bring an Illustrator file into Cinema 4D and work with it using the relatively new vector import object. So let's get started. All right, we are in Illustrator. You can see our design here. It's been saved out. And what I can do is in Cinema 4D, open this very project. Okay, and I didn't have to save out my Illustrator file any specific way. Um, this actually detected that I saved it out as an Illustrator CC. And so it's choosing the correct or what it thinks is the correct importer option here. And, and usually it's pretty good. Um, the only thing I may want to consider here is increasing the scale just to make things a little bit larger, but I'll leave that at the default for now. And now you can see we have our design, all right, or at least most of it. So let's kind of see what we have here with this vector import object. You can see it has a live link to our um, Illustrator file, which means if I go back here and create outlines from this text and then save it, and obviously I would save a different version so that if I do need to come back and update the text, I have that ability, but I'll just do this for speed purposes today. But now when I hit reload, you will now see the text came over because it's been converted um, into outlines. Okay. You may also notice I just have this single object and we'll see how to get all the other components here shortly, but we do have some basic controls like layer offset. Uh, not that we have layers at the moment, but that would allow us to kind of spread those out similar to the path spread, but um, by uh, layer and then extrusion depth. And this is where scaling can help because you can see how it can make things a little bit crazy, a little bit, you know, the scale a little bit out of whack, uh, a little bit faster than you may expect. So I'll set that back down to one, All right? Actually even lower than that. We are at 0.0353 before, so that will work. Uh, and if I want to bring everything um, over correctly uh, so I can work with the individual components here, what I need to do is check on hierarchy. And that will allow me to expand this and we will see we have strokes and fills. And the way this works is anything that has just a stroke comes over as a sweep. Anything that has a fill, well, it comes over with a fill. And we can confirm that. If I select all these strokes, you'll see pretty much just the, the screw designs there. Uh, and if I go into Illustrator, click on one, you'll see, yep, it has a stroke, no fill. The other thing I wanna mention here is, you know, not, there really isn't a whole lot of organization going on. And so this can be uh, a pretty tricky mess. Uh, so I would definitely recommend coming in here and organizing things by putting them on new layout layers. So maybe it, that is the text. So I kind of got my caps a little messed up. Let's do this with the screws. Put all of those on there, just so we can see this. Do a save. Come over to cinema again, back in the vector import object reload. Um, and you will see we now have our different layers. So this can be really, really helpful. Uh, to help us stay organized and hit the ground running when it comes to modeling this. That's pretty much all I use this vector object for. Um, we do have some spline settings as well as sweep settings if you want to kind of adjust those. I would rather do these individually though uh, and not kind of globally using um, those properties. Oh no, it looks like it broke it. Um, so that's fun. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is maybe reload this. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna take this null out of my vector import object and say, you know what, I'm done with this. Now that I have things kind of organized, I have some extrudes, I have some sweeps, um, I can go ahead and you know get to work uh, turning this into my logo. And I'm not gonna go through the entire process here, but we will see the general approach I would take. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a cube and realize that, yep, this logo is, or design is quite small, so I'll scale it up until kind of just pokes through the cube a little bit. That way it's you know about the same size as some of our other basic geometry. Okay, from here, what I may do is consolidate. So this is the R spline. This is the W spline. So I will name that. And then this one is the P spline and put all of them in the same extrude, right? Perfect. 
that way. I only have one extrude. And what you may notice is I'm only seeing one of the letters uh, being extruded here. And I can fix that by clicking hierarchical. You can see the others. I can come here to the object tab and now I can turn up the um, offset. Now, uh, it's actually kind of going the opposite way. So if I wanna take this negative, I can't. I could just change the direction here as well to help with that. Um, auto can sometimes help us out there. So maybe something like that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, now you may also be looking at these colors going, you know, they're great for contrast, but maybe not so great for trying to model and work with um, our logo here. And so these colors um, are not layer colors, which we do actually end up with um, a layer. Uh, they're not sure why. Um, but if we go into the attribute section in the basic tab, you will see it's actually using our display color here. So you could set this to automatic. You could, well, it is set to automatic, so we can come in here and change this. Um, oops. Or you could just set it to custom and, you know, it would also use that as well. Either way, it's no longer the um, black color it was before, and I can see my geometry a little bit clearly, though. Uh, clear now. I also do like the contrast, though, so just kind of depends on your personal preference. Now, for the screws here, I would actually model these. I'm not sure I would really kind of work with the um, extrusion here because if we take a look at them and kind of see what we have, they're not really very much like a, a screw. Um, I could maybe work with this stroke here, um, and I can make this work. It's just going to require some additional setup um, on that I'm going to have to do. So let's just kind of go through one of these really quick and really just probably hide that. I can see I have these three elements here. This one, kind of the main one here, and I actually don't want this to be a stroke. I would want this to be an extrude. So I'm gonna create an extrude, put my spline in there. Don't need that, All right? Now, maybe I could have done this a little bit better in um, Illustrator, so it would have come over the way I want. I can work with my caps here, all right? Now with this, I probably only want a cap on um, one side. So I'll just uncheck, oops, the start cap in this case, um, and just kind of do something like that. So I have that rounded edge. Honestly, I do want an end cap. I just want separate bevel controls so that I can turn this one and just make it kind of flat on the back. Now for these guys, what I would do, and certainly would help if these would get centered a little bit better. So I'll select both of those, come over here to tools, go axis, center axis two, and then with those still selected, go to tools and do center parent two, and that should move these right where I want them. And you can see that I want these just kind of cutting in like this to create the divots. Now, um, in a previous video, I mentioned, I've talked about using the bool, I've talked about using volume builder. So really either one of those could work. Um, I think I'll do the bool here. I'm gonna group, put these in a bool. Make sure I get the order right. I don't believe I did. No, I did. So we can see it's not working. Let's uncheck high quality. That seems to be helping. Um, but the problem is our shapes here don't really, you know, work together. They're two separate shapes when really we would want this to be one continuous shape. And so that's really what's kind of freaking out the bool. Uh, so instead, maybe we do want to go with the volume builder. So let's give that a shot. Come over here, volume builder, drop both of those elements inside of it, lower the resolution even more. All right, and for the null, put that on top and switch its mode to subtract. So that's kind of looking pretty good still, maybe a bit faceted, uh, though that's very easy to fix in the spline by working with the adaptive angle there. And we can always come back to this and you know, make it a little bit larger. Actually probably should have had both of these selected at the same time. And if I'm moving a bit too fast with this um, volume builder, I do apologize, but like I said, I do have a video just on that. So there's the screw. 
what I can do to turn it into geometry now is put it in a volume mesher. All right, so now I have some geometry. Uh, and if I really wanted to get crazy, I'd probably put this in a remesh. Oops. Make sure it's set to Z remesher. It's calculating right now, so it's not going to change the polygon count because our mesh density is the same. Um, but it will significantly help with the edge flow here. And so now maybe I can get away with like 20% of the number of polygons. And that will really help streamline this whole process. Now, yeah, there we go. So quite a bit fewer polygons working pretty well for the most part. I'm not sure how much of that we would notice a little bit, but little distance away, you know, I think we would be just fine. And then ultimately when I'm, I'm happy with this, I probably would make it editable, but that's really kind of all there is to it. Let's see if there's anything else we really can do. Uh, modeling wise, you know, these I actually made with shape builder so we can see they are having some issues. Uh, we can see if that is a um, sweep issue or um, a spline issue. So let's see what we got. So actually looks okay. Let's see how many points we have there. I think we have uh, some issues with our points. Always important to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, we may actually have extra points there that we don't need depending on how um, something is built. So let's actually throw this in an extrude and just check that. All right, so how you make something in Illustrator does impact the way it comes over here. Uh, and so that is something to keep in mind and look out for, especially if you get crazy with the shape builder or pathfinder, something like that. Um, it definitely can cause some problems, though it looks like it was just the sweep um, in that rectangle shape, um, having a hard time in the corners. And I really think um, changing the intermediate points type here to something like natural um, could help adaptive. No, actually, that's what it was at. Um, natural is probably my best bet. And then just trying to make it so it, they just meet. Um, but ultimately, the spline, that rectangle shape being in that corner is just a little bit too hard for it to figure out. Um, would be very easy for me to come in and fix this manually uh, if that's what I want. Though really what I may do to achieve a similar effect here would be with this spline is to just create an outline. So if I just right click and choose create outline, there it is. I can then kind of get that outlined and turn my extrude on. Now I have almost the same shape. It's not quite even all the way around, um, but it's you know a little bit better than that. Um, now, ultimately I probably would want that you know solid like I had initially. So I'll leave it like that. And the last thing I'll mention here is the cap section. Really, really important to um, add more to this than just kind of this hard edge. At the very least, you know, you can round it out. Uh, you can also load some really nice presets that you can then apply multiple materials to um, when it comes time to do your lighting and materials. You can adjust the shape depth, uh, the size, really get some nice detail, some extra geometry without having to put in a whole lot of work. So that's a look at the vector import object as well as how to get started modeling from an Illustrator file. Um, let me know if there's, there's anything else you'd like to see me cover uh, and take care.